Pediatric HIV in 2016 is a, is a message and a story of hope. Although we have tens of thousands of children who are HIV infected, many of them are on treatment and those on treatment are doing very well. In the last 10 to 15 years we've made great strides in, in managing children with HIV. We're putting more children on treatment earlier but a lot of work still remains and there are great challenges that still lie ahead for us as the scientific community and the medical community in trying to find better formulations for children, find better ways of preventing HIV occurring in the first place and actually looking ultimately for a cure. Children have a lot of vulnerabilities in the field of HIV because they have different kind of disease progression, they have different needs with regard to treatment, and they're often left behind in the development of drugs. At ESRU and at WITS in the university, together in collaboration with multiple other units in the country, South Africa has taken this challenge head on and is in fact leading policy makers and um, research organizations in the world in terms of new discoveries and, and guidance. In 2015 alone, uh, globally, there were over 10.4 million new cases of TB and of those, a million were children. It's important to know that uh, when children are exposed to TB and they are young, their risk of getting TB disease is very high. So we need to be identifying the adults that have TB that, that, and know to screen the children around them so that we can uh, pick up TB early on. And once these children have come into our care, it's still, even with the latest modalities of diagnosis that are available, it's still quite difficult to diagnose TB in children. So clinicians need to have a very high index of suspicion uh, to be able to do this. There is an entity called drug-resistant TB and clinicians treating children need to have this in the back of their mind particularly when they have adults that have failed therapy or adults who are known to have drug-resistant TB that are in contact with children. The good news though is that once children are picked up to have TB and they're put on treatment they do very well. So we all know that being a teenager is not the easiest thing in the world and to be a teenager who has a chronic illness is even harder and to be a teenager who has HIV I think can be very difficult um, but teenagers are one of the most rewarding group of patients to work with. I think things that worry teenagers is the stigma of HIV. They worried are they going to live a normal lifespan with HIV? Are they ever going to be able to have um, families? Are they going to be able to have sex? Are they going to be able to get married? And I think it's important to know that teenagers with HIV should be able to live a normal life, just like everyone else. The only difference is they have to be very, very strict about taking their tablets every day. It's not easy to remember to take tablets every day. And it's not easy to live with this burden that someone might find out about your secret. I remember the reaction I got from my grandmother when they told me she would like, she, she was crying and all that. It felt so painful because, you know, you don't understand the thing and you are told that you have this thing and it will be inside you like forever. The nurses made it feel like we were all the same. They always remind you, take your medicine. If you are sexually active, use a condom. And you, if you want to have babies, you can come to us or if you want to tell your partner that you are HIV positive, you can come to us, we can explain to him or to her. So I think one of the most important things is that when a child has been diagnosed with HIV, that we start working with the family to work on a plan about how we're going to tell the child that they were born with this sickness. And over the years we have found out that when a child becomes a teenager, if you've lied to them, they will never ever forgive you. So one of the strongest messages we have for the family is to always be as honest um, as possible and in an age-appropriate way. 
In our testing campaigns that are done in South Africa, the focus is mainly on adults and children aren't always included in those campaigns. Uh, many young babies and young children are often tested as part of our PMTCT program or our Preventing Mother to Child Transmission program, but a lot of our older children are excluded from this program as well and so they slip through the cracks. The problem when this happens is that if there is an older child with HIV, they will often then present to us very late, they'll be very sick, and then it's very difficult for us to manage the complications of HIV and to treat that child. What most people don't know is that many children who are born with HIV can live without any symptoms of HIV for many years. So even older children um, who ha maybe have never been tested before, or if their mom or their parents were diagnosed after they were born, they may still be HIV positive, but you may not have any symptoms of that. So a message for healthcare workers is to test our older children. If you diagnose an adult with HIV or a younger sibling with HIV, it's very important for us to test the older children in the family. Um, and for the parents and the caregivers out there, get your children tested. The sooner we test the children before they get sick, the sooner we can put them on medication and we can prevent them from getting terrible complications of HIV and help them to live healthy, fulfilling lives. Having been in the field of pediatric HIV research over the last 18 years, where it's been most fulfilling and really exciting to see how one's research has changed practice, I strongly encourage people to get involved, get involved in research, get involved in the management of children with HIV. There's very few other areas in medicine, I think, that one gets as much fulfillment in seeing lives change around through research that we're doing, doing here in South Africa, and the hope we're able to offer our patients as a result of that. So I think in the last 18 years, when I look back, I'm amazed at all the work that my colleagues and I have been able to be privileged to be part of.